Hello everybody, and welcome to my first ever YouTube tutorial. If you couldn't gather from the, the setup here, we're gonna be talking about working with tape loops a bit. Right here I have a little DIY cassette tape loop. Now, I'm not gonna go over in explicit detail how to actually make one of these in this video. Portland-based tape wizard Amulets actually has a really great video on how to make a homemade cassette tape loop and I will link to that in the description. For our purposes today, I'm just going to assume that if you're watching this, you have watched that, uh, you have successfully made a tape loop, or if not, that you're just interested in getting into it and kind of seeing some of the performance techniques that are possible with tape loops, cassette tape players, and some light effects, as you can see here. So let's dive in. The first question you might find yourself asking before you even start making sound is why cassette tape loops? I think as we as we look at some of the techniques that I'm gonna show you guys, it might come become obvious why you'd want to use these, but there's something really organic with tape loops. There's something really magical about them. They don't sync like Ableton Live. They don't sync like a an MPC or any of these other more traditional performance interfaces. They they're asynchronous by nature, they're gritty, they're lo-fi by design, uh, and they can impart a massive amount of character into whatever it is you're working with just by the nature of their physical characteristics. And furthermore, the kind of limitations of these devices force you to think about sound in different ways. One of the things that blew my mind when I first started getting into working with these was it completely rewired my musical brain. I started thinking about sound material differently. I started thinking about performance te techniques differently. So a couple really essential things that we need to know about tape loops before getting into this is that cassette tapes have four, count them, four different tracks on these. Now, traditionally, the reason for this is because we listen to music in stereo, and we have since like the mid 20th century. Stereo is basically two mono tracks that have been coupled together to give us the full stereo image of a sound because we have two ears, so we want two tracks. Cassettes have a side A, which is the first half of the record, and then a side B, which you take out, you flip, you put in, and that's the second side of the record. So because we have two sides, we have two stereo tracks, which two times two equals four. You could use them like that. You could use them like they're used in traditional tape, cassette tape records, um, having a stereo going opposite directions, uh, side A, side B, but we don't have to do that. We could have four separate elements on a tape loop. So this is one I've made. This is a loop I've actually used a ton. I've used on a record that I'm working on now. I've used in a bunch of performances. So um, let's just hear what's on it and get a taste for, for sort of some of the characteristics of a tape loop. Um, this is a Tascam Porta 02 MK2. I love these because they are not super expensive. They're tiny, they can fit into a backpack. They're pretty durable, um, they're moddable. I've modded this one, which I'll, I'll talk about at some point. And um, you get access to your four tracks. If you look over here, you get uh, track one, two, three, four, and then you get panning for each of them, which is super, super dope because it's super useful and super fun to actually have something on a, on a track and send it uh, around between your stereo field. Of course, you could have these hard panned on two tracks here and it just be a stereo sound that, that is across the two tracks, but you don't have to do that and we will get more into that in just a minute. I'm gonna put this in here and and let's go. So these are some piano sounds that I have on here and I'm gonna have everything in terms of the panning just right up the middle. This, my, my delay unit here isn't doing anything right now, it's bypassed, so. My track number one. You can already start, sort of hear the asynchronous jaggedness of these loops. It's kind of vapor wavy, you know? It, you're never gonna get a perfect loop on a tape loop. I mean, I suppose it's possible. And if you do, that's sick. But kind of the beauty of it is that you're not. And you get these jagged sort of phrases that I think are quite beautiful. This is what's on track number two. Mm -hmm. 
Track number three. Track number four. Cool. So four different things across four tracks. This is, uh, I would say, the most straightforward way to perform with a tape loop. You cut the loop and you take four different sonic elements, four different sound objects, if you will, and you place them on each of the four different tracks. Now, if you were listening closely, you'll notice that obviously these are four piano sounds. These are four piano loops that I have here. I grabbed them all off of an old solo piano cassette I got at a, a salvage shop different points on their record, so I don't really know the musical relationship between each of them. I don't have perfect pitch, nor am I, is my ear training great. So I don't know what the actual musical relationship between each of them is, but they're all from the same recording, so there is kind of a, a consistency between the sonic texture of them. Uh, I think it's a live record, so it's the same piano, which is again kind of helpful to help these four sounds kind of congeal together. Uh, tracks two and, f no, tracks one and three are reversed. So something that's really cool about a tape loop and um, cassettes in general is that we can record forward and backward on these and we can then flip it and play it the opposite direction. So now, I lied. Um, track three and f our one and four were were reversed. Uh, are reversed now. So the last playthrough I did, they were playing um, forward traditionally. So you'll hear that now. And then and three and then four. Cool, so now if we start to think about this, the fact that we can play these backwards and forwards, we can kind of think that we we have the four tracks, but we can play it backwards and forwards, so we almost have eight possible kind of sounds that we can squeeze and wrung out of our cassette. Because we can, we can play it forward, and then we can flip it around and play it backwards and have a reverse of all of our sounds we just heard. Um, this is something I employ somewhat regularly in live situations where I will actually be playing into something like a delay or a looper, uh, another looper pedal or a big reverb, and I'll, I'll, I'll go 100% wet and like turn the feedback up and get this big kind of cloud. And then when you can't notice, I flip the cassette and I come back in. And um, now I have all my sounds, but they sound different because they're backwards. And that, you know, that's like the cut bell in synthesis. It, it totally changes the audience's perception of what the sound is. And in some cases, it, it sounds completely different. Uh, combine that with some tweaking of settings on an effects processor, and boom, you have a whole new sonic palette to work with. So let's uh, let's dive into some stuff that I would personally do with this tape that's in here. As I said, I've used it before, but now I kind of want to talk about maybe using a delay or a reverb or something of that case. Obviously we're using a delay here. I'm using the Eventide Time Factor, old reliable. I've had this gear, piece of gear longer than almost anything else. You don't need something like the Eventide Time Factor. Um, these are kind of expensive. You can get them used for not bad, but any sort of delay, d cheap delays, cheap reverbs, honestly, they sound great because there's already a low fineness to these. These are already scratchy and poppy, so kind of crappier delays, bargain bin stuff can sometimes sound just awesome uh, on these. So really experiment. You don't need something nice and expensive like this. This is just what I have and I've had it forever and I love it. So yeah, let's let's listen to some of this through the delay. I have just the standard digital delay algorithm on here. 60% to the dry side on here. Um, medium, You'll, I mean, you'll hear it. It's a medium kind of delay, nothing crazy because um, I do want to maintain kind of the textures of the loops on here. So let's get started.
And there you have it. Yeah, that's kind of a little improvisation that I would do with this cassette here with these piano loops on it. One thing I must admit is in the middle of that, you saw me use my vaporizer knob up here. This is a special modification I've made specifically to this Tascam Porta O2. It actually starves the the motor that's inside of here that actually drives the, the transport mechanism and causes it to play back more slowly. And so you can actually drop the pitch of different um, tape loop material. This is called the vaporizer because it, I tested first tested it out on some like soul and R&B stuff and it was just like, oh, that's vaporwave. So yeah, um, that's one kind of special thing about my Porta O2 here that, that disclaimer is not stock, but it's easy to do. Proceed at your own risk. I take no responsibility for a broken Porta O2 on your hands, but uh, there are a lot of other cassette players that actually have VeriSpeed controls, which is essentially what this is. It's a, it's a variable speed playback control. So if you see one with that and you're looking at getting a cassette deck, you can do really, really interesting sonic things with that. That's very uh, music concrete, Pierre Schaeffer, the acousmatic sound transformations. That's a super common trick is if you flip a sound backwards and you slow it down, boom, new sound. Is that the sound of a train or is that the sound of a demon coming from the nether world? I don't know. That actually brings me to kind of, I guess my conclusion of this first demo here is uh, this loop is only like five seconds long. You know, so be aware that, you know, you maybe you can't make an hour long set out of one of these loops, but uh, you can really squeeze a lot out of a five, six, seven second loop and four separate things on four tracks. As you saw during the actual little improv I just did, I was messing with the panning and the, and the spread the entire time. I was fading back between different things the entire time. I was messing with the actual, the delay here, changing the feedback times. I didn't really mess with the delay times too much, but there's just a world of possibility locked within these. And I think in this day and age, it's easy to kind of want like a maximalist interface, something that you, there's just more and more features, more and more menus, and this is the opposite. There's like four or five things that you can do on here, but guess what? Those four and five things kick ass and you can really go far with them if you're patient. And it, as I said, if you get into doing this, it will start to kind of rewire your brain, not just in terms of what you're looking for in, for sound, because each of these loops on their own, I think are kind of undesirable. You. I, not undesirable, but you wouldn't find these in like a sample pack, you know, that you bought online, or maybe you do, maybe, I don't know, maybe people are into like tape loop sample packs now, but um, traditionally, you know, I've never found anything like one of these on a sample pack, but they all work and you can make all of them work and you can massage these sounds into something beautiful if you're patient and you and you just have a couple tools. Tape player, and I mean, you don't even need this. You really, you don't even need a effects processor. It just, I think it, you know, it really makes the whole thing pop and I love delays. So thanks for watching, uh, like, comment, subscribe, share. Uh, I'm new to this, so bear with me as I kind of work out the kinks of these videos. I'm gonna have a few more to come where I talk about more techniques and kind of more material that is interesting and useful to have on here on one of these cassette loops. I realize now that uh, it's probably can't see the loop in here awesome just because of the lighting situation and the fact that my table is like all technicolored, but uh, it's in there. Yeah, if you have any questions also, if I made anything confusing, feel free to message me or, or comment. And my Instagram is midi lizard. That's midi underscore lizard. Check that out for more regular content and you have an awesome one.